Hello guys, today I'll be reviewing Hardwired to Self-Destruct by Metallica. And I do kind of have a story with how I got my copy of the album. Now, of course, it was produced by Greg Fiddleman, who also worked with them during Death Magnetic. He wasn't the producer, Rick Rubin produced it, but Greg helped with the overall production and sound of the album. But with this album, they let him produce, and... Uh, not the best production out there, but I would say that it's their best production since probably their 90s work. But yeah, with my story with this album, with how I got my copy, uh, I was in my senior year of high school, and... I took the wrong lunch. Now, at my high school, there were two lunches. I accidentally took the wrong one, but when I, during my lunch, I went off campus, went to Walmart, and bought my copy of the album. But when I got back to campus, I realized that I took the wrong lunch. So that so I heard to my class, and that class was, of course, Japanese year three. And my teacher was not definitely not happy with me, but she quickly just cooled off and kind of just was just whatever about it but yeah that's basically my story with how I got my copy of the album but yeah I got the three disc version and yeah definitely worth owning for sure but anyways let's go ahead and dive into the album the album starts off with the with, uh, you can either say title track or just hardwired uh, one of the shorter tracks on the album it was the lead off single and definitely got many people pumped when it came out um, the song is short thrashy heavy and just really in your face and yeah it, it definitely comes and goes for sure because of due to how fast it is and just how energetic it is in general lyrically not their strongest but not terrible but overall i'd say it's a pretty catchy song but then we get to atlas rise which i believe was the third single and you can definitely hear metallica's influences in this track uh, I definitely hear Iron Maiden especially, especially when you listen to around the chorus or in the chorus uh, with the rhythm work and the overall riffs. But also I think James sounds pretty good in this track too. Maybe one of his best vocal performances on the album, maybe. But overall, kind of a fun track to listen to. But then we get to the song Now That We're Dead, which honestly has never been one of my personal favorites on the album. Uh, it's maybe one of my least favorites, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's not my number one least favorite, but it is one of the weaker songs on the album for me in general. Uh, a bit slower in pace uh, or in tempo and a bit more groovy, kind of reminiscent of something you hear from something from one of their albums from their 90s work. But uh, overall, a decent song. Uh, I do think that it... It could benefit from a little bit of trimming, maybe not a lot, but a little bit, but overall it's a decent track. But then you get to Moth into Flame, which is one of the more anthemic type of songs from them. It was the second single, and you yeah, have your moments that are sound closer to like something like the Black Album, while moments that may sound like they're more thrashy uh, past work, especially with Moments like the lighted up part, which is closer to the chorus, if I remember correctly. And overall, a pretty solid track. And definitely one of the highlights on the album for me, too. And definitely not a bad choice for a single. And I can definitely see this song continuing to be a concert staple for them. But then we get to Dream No More. And this song is definitely comes goes closer to the Load Reload era in terms of sound and style. You can definitely hear it with how James delivers some of the lyrics in the song, especially in the verses. But it's always been one of my personal favorites on the album, actually. I've always really dug this one. Probably one of my, I don't know, top five, top three favorite songs on the album. I don't know, I've always really dug this one, especially. Um, interesting music video, too, with them all wearing white and... Um, that's basically it. How well, that's basically all I remember from the video. I know there was um, some anima a little bit of animation in there, like on a person. I can't remember. Maybe I'm thinking of a different music video, but Dream No More definitely a great song. But then we get to Halo on Fire, which is the closer for disc one, the epic of the album. A bit more melodic. You definitely get some intriguing melodies, such as at the start of the song and then the verses. But then you get to the chorus where get a bit more beefiness from the riffs or in the guitar and 
And there are some aspects of the song that do kind of make the song kind of feel anthemic in a way, kind of like with Moth into Flame, but it's overall a pretty solid track. Um, does it earn the right to be around eight minutes? Um, I'm still not sure. I maybe shave off maybe 30 seconds or a minute off, but it's certainly not a bad song. It's certainly not boring. I think it does enough to keep you interested in the song, but maybe shave off a little bit and then it maybe leave more of a lasting impact maybe, but either way, I still think it's one of the better songs on the album. Maybe one of the best songs on the album too. But we move on to disc two with the song Confusion. And it starts off with Metallica doing their version in my evil pretty much. I mean that's 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 what I immediately heard when I heard that song for the first time or this song for the first time, but with the drum patterns and some of the riffs, it really reminded me of In My Evil. But the song in general kind of reminds me of the Death Magnetic album, something you'd hear from that album. But uh, not one of my personal favorites on the album, but I do like it though. But then you get to Man Unkind, which is one of the weaker songs on the album for me personally, and I know some people are probably the same way. But I do like the main riff, um, not the most amazing main riff out there, or one of their best main riffs either, but I, I do overall think the main riff is one of the best aspects of the song. But yeah, it does have a bit more groove to it, which I think is kind of cool, but the song has never really stood out as much as some of the other tracks on the album. But then you get to Here Comes Revenge, and if I had to choose one song on the album that I think comes the closest to being filler, or really is filler I'd probably pick here comes revenge the song doesn't really offer much of anything new for the band or, or for the album in general um, maybe some decent riffs here and there but that's not really saying much but yeah just a, kind of an okay song in general but then we get to am I savage now musically I think this is a pretty interesting song uh, for some people it's one of their least favorites but for me there's always been aspects of the song that I've always really dug. Um, I know like at the 1 minute and 55 seconds mark and the 3 minutes and 18 seconds mark, at those two marks, um, musically, you get some guitar that kind of reminds me of Megadeth a little bit. And then you ha also have the chorus, which kind of has a little bit of groove to it. And overall, I think it's a decent chorus. Not the most amazing chorus that they've done, but not bad though. But I do. But overall, I do like it. Uh, but yeah, Am I Savage, uh, not the best track on the album, but I wouldn't say that it's one of the weakest. It's probably close to the middle for me if I were to rank the songs on the album. But then we get to Murder One, which is a tribute to Lemmy. And um, it's a bummer that I have to say it, but I think the song could have been a bit more interesting. Now the, the Motorhead and Lemmy references in the song I think are pretty cool. I think they're actually pretty well done actually. They don't come off as corny or make you want to roll your eyes or anything like that. Lyrically I do like it, but I don't know. The song in general just isn't as memorable as some of the other tracks on the album for me personally, which is a bummer since that it's a tribute, but for what it is, it's not bad. I do like it overall, but again, I do think it's one of the weaker songs on the album to be honest but it does have some interesting melodies on it though such as at the start of the song but then we get to finally the album closer spit out the bone which is often considered one of the best songs on the album or one of the fan favorites on the album and understandably so is one of my personal favorites on the album maybe my favorite easily top three absolutely on the album but with this song they definitely go back to to the more thrashy side of their catalog and this song just is just full of energy and just tempos and rhythms that just really just pull you into the song and just really punch you in the face I mean this song is just a blast to listen to I absolutely loved it the first time I heard it and I still enjoy it to this day definitely one of the highlights of the album and definitely one of the highlights of their modern work in general all around a great track. Um, it's, I believe it's around seven minutes long, and I think it earns that song length. Um, the song, in my opinion, doesn't overstay its welcome. It does enough to keep me invested and engaged in the song. But yeah, a lot of great musical ideas throughout this track, especially with 
uh, the aggressive slash heavy nature of the track. But yeah, definitely a great song and definitely a great way to close off the album. So if I had to rate this album, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. My score could change at any time. Um, not their best album, but not their worst. I don't think it's as good as their first five albums, but that's those five albums definitely set the bar really high for them. So, of course, that's going to be really tough for them. But I do think that this album is maybe their best since the Black Album or the 90s work. But I think I might like this album maybe a little bit more than Load and Reload. Yeah, probably. But... Uh, yeah, definitely a great album. Definitely interested in seeing what they'll do next after this album. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the album. How does it compare to their other albums for you? Do you think it's their best since the Black Album or Load or Reload or anything like that? And all that good stuff. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and like, subscribe. Have a nice day and take care.